Hello everyone, this is Will. And this is Alex. And welcome back to another episode of They Mostly Come Out at Night. Bah! Oink, oink. Mostly. Yeah, so, uh... How do you feel about yourself? I feel... A little piggish. <laughs> a little... A little swiney. A little bit? A little swiney, mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit, though. A little porky. A little porky. <laughs> little, uh... <laughs> you know, I'm... I'm feeling that sort of way. Especially after this... Interesting movie. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call it bad. It's not terrible. It's not good. But, uh... Oh, by no means it is it certainly... Good. It's certainly interesting... That it's fucking wrong. In, like, every sense of yes, the word, yeah. but in the same time, the wrongness only adds to the interesting stuff. I would... I guess the word I would describe, use to describe it, is uh, absurd. Oh. It is absurd. Just slightly, yes. N- this is a very absurd no, movie. No, it's not a very absurd. It doesn't have the most stupid sheriff... In any movie ever made. In cinematic history? Yes. Yes, the stupidest sheriff. Except, I think the um, the sheriff that came to the door in that... Oh, the body in shop? the body shop and just asked if... That might as well be this guy. Here, and asked if everything was okay. Are you doing anything illegal? No. no? Okay. okay. <laughs> Keep it down. Keep it down. Uh, so, the movie tonight uh, was Pigs. A.K.A. The Thirteenth Pig. A.K.A. Daddy's... Daddy's Deadly Darling. Okay. I'm just gonna read off all these. Pigs. Horror Farm. The Thirteenth Pig. Daddy's Girl. The Strange Exorcism of Lynn Hart. What? The Strange Love Exorcist. And Roadside torture chamber <laughs> those are all the yes alternative titles yes what i know in hindsight you should have just stuck with pigs pigs works it's yes. fine because 13th pig makes no goddamn sense well well at the end i just oh my god it makes sense at the end but that's re- it's stupid it's retarded and daddy's deadly darling is just that sounds like a fucking porno or some shit, which, <laughs> watching this, you almost have the same feeling you would after. You might want to take a shower, you know. Yeah, you're going to feel filthy you after feel this feel filthy one. after this. I know I do. Uh, after yeah. the endless scenes of fucking screaming and... Screaming and just... And like, the weird death scenes, I feel like... the weird nightmares. I feel like I need a shower. Yeah, same. I feel dirty. You should. Like a pig that's just rolled in <laughs> mud. Oh, shit. That's the point, Will. They got us. They did. They got us. You feel like a pig after watching this movie. (laughs) That's it. That's what he meant. Mark Lawrence did it. Mark Lawrence, you fucking madman. Your passion project to make people feel like pigs. I read that he took out um, another mortgage on his house to make this movie. That's true passion Mm -hmm. right there. Okay. That's like... It's dedication. Yes. Wasn't it shot in like eight days too? Yes. The girl is his daughter. Seriously? Tony Lawrence. Oh. I looked it up and I found sense. out. Is she in anything else? Yeah. Not much. Okay. Are we gonna watch her again? Maybe. Great. I don't know. I love her wooden acting. Oh, it's it's an enigma. I bet you he took out a mortgage and like, was still filming at his own like, It's farm. simultaneously wooden acting, and at the same time, it only adds to the weirdness of the character. I don't yeah, know. It's weird. It's fucking weird. Well, I guess now the good time as any. I guess we gotta review this shit. Oh, okay. Tragic. Ah, well, here we go. Alright, so, we get a scene of a truck... Uh, a black Ford truck pulling up into this like farm area, mm-hmm. and this old man gets out of the truck, and... takes out a. Is a body wrapped up in like a 
Yeah, he like pulls the tailgate down with yeah. the body wrapped up and he uh takes it into the the shed. The shed. Which they never show this happening ever again. Nope. Like never. this is just the first the first and only time he does this. This is the only time he does this. He takes the body out of the bag. It's like a fucking knapsack. Yeah, and just some dead guy. And some dead guy. He starts talking to him. Yeah, he's like, Oh, I'm sorry I had to do this or like, you know, something yeah. like that and like you know, like but the the pigs have a hunger for human flesh. Yes. The pigs and <laughs> I remember the first time it happened. I I hit a drunk. I, I was drunk. A did, drunk guy. Did he hit a drunk guy or did the drunk guy? I think he hit a drunk guy. Okay, so he hit a drunk guy walking down and then, like, wanted to cover it up. So he fed the body to the pig. And he's been doing this ever since. And they developed a taste for human flesh, and they go crazy when they don't have human flesh. So you think, getting into it, that uh, this movie is going to be about a farmer who murders people. You think you would think that by this. Well, <laughs> you'd be wrong, but you would think that first yeah. impression. That's what I thought it was going to be. Yep, I imagine that's what everyone thought. <clears throat> so, then we get a woman. Did it ever show like a title screen? I don't remember. I'll be honest with you. I don't remember either. Oh, it did. I don't remember. I oh yeah, she was driving. It's this woman driving in a a Volkswagen Beetle. And it shows the opening credits. And she's wearing, like, a nurse's uniform. Then she stops the car and throws the uniform away. Yes. And then she gets to this uh, Zambrini's Cafe. Now, when she gets to Zambrini's Cafe, she stops before she goes in. And this is yes. where we're introduced to my favorite character of the film, Pigzilla. <laughs> Now, Pigzilla is not an on-screen character. No. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Pigzilla is something special because yes. it's this highly amplified, very loud... Pig squeal. This pig squeal that they... I think they, like, lengthened it out, yeah. too. Because it's this really long, loud, amplified, distorted yeah. pig snort. It's insane. It's it total insanity. And, yeah... She's just walking around, it's dead silent, and you just hear this ridiculously loud pig squeal. And I'm just like, okay, that's like some that's like a sound effect out of a monster movie. It is, that's why I call it but Pigzilla. No. So like it's even weirder because she stops at the fence and then like yeah. there's no pigs around, but no. she, like it shows the pig pin. Yeah. Like like okay, we get it, it's a pig farm. He like and she's just like uncomfortable. Like he uses pigs for his uh restaurant, right? Yeah. Um, she, um, she goes in and talks to Zambrina, Zambrina, Zambrini, <laughs> sorry. She wants to work there. Okay, so this is the worst dialogue, one, some of the worst dialogue, because literally she walks in and she says, hey, like, because there's a sign outside that says waitress wanted. Yeah. And she walks in and says, I'm looking for a job. And Zambrini responds with, ah, you want a job, eh? It's like, no shit, Sherlock. She no. walked in and said she wanted a job, and then you ask her if she wants a job? What kind yeah. of dialogue is that? Who knows, Well, Does she really want a job? You gotta you gotta confirm. Uh, I mean, yeah, apparently. Yes. <laughs> you, gotta... you gotta confirm that shit. <laughs> she might be joking. I don't... <laughs> so they talk a little bit, and she decides to accept the offer. But also, she can sleep there. Yeah, so he, he says there's not much places to stay in town because it's a small town and that the room comes with working there yes which is the weirdest job agreement on the planet but whatever a waitress and you have to live there yeah whatever so he leads that's her, a little weird he leads her to the swankiest of swankiest rooms oh man the it walls is, are the walls are covered with like what looks like black mold not black mold it looks like someone spilled uh, some sort of liquid it's on like every yeah like every surface of the room is like stained like it would take effort to get a room that dirty yes it would take a lot of if effort. you were trying to clean that shit you would have to like rip all the wallpaper off and it has like a bed a little nightstand and a dresser that's it the dresser and... has like a fucking 
just a random like bamboo plant on it. And then she's just like, "Yeah, okay, this is fine. That's fine. This is fine. Let's let's. I'll stay here. I'll work for you. It's weird that you're making me stay here while working for you, but you know, whatever." We realize later why she did it. But mm, yep. But at this point, you're just like, "Why on earth? Who would fucking accept this Who offer?" Who wouldn't? I wouldn't. Why? Okay, you know what? You're right. Opportunity of a lifetime. That's the swag room. That is <laughs> okay. The, like I said, swanky. It's so posh. It's so swag. She brought was... a date back to it, <laughs> and that later. ended well for him. Oh, very well. That's he, how swag it is. He so well he almost got laid. Um. <laughs> uh. So, so she goes into the bathroom and is looking at the mirror. And she opens up. It's like the, a medicine cabinet. There's this weird song playing. It's like this weird, like piano. Papa thing. Bear or something. It's Papa Bear, blah blah. What yeah. do you see? Like it's creepy. It it is actually kind of unnerving because they play it every now and then, and it's always just like unsettling. But yeah, she reaches in like the medicine cabinet and finds a a, a sh- razor, a straight razor. Yeah, a straight razor, like one of the old school ones. Yeah. And um, it's immediately, like, looking at it while the song plays. And then she closes the cabinet, and we're just like, okay, so is she gonna start murdering people? Little did we know. Well. Yeah, well, yep. I mean, we'll get to that. And then... Then we get the weird-ass neighbors. Yes, there are these old neighbors somewhere, close by, apparently. It's this one old woman and her, like, friend who's in a wheelchair, and they're talking to the sheriff. Yeah. And they're talking they're, about um, Zambrini. And they're saying the pigs are loose. Because the pigs... They keep talking about how the pigs are getting loose and they're going to eat them. Yes. And then she starts going on this like crazy rant about how Zambrini is taking people and turning them into That's pigs. Later. That's the second time the sheriff talks to them. Well, remember, this is the time where he says dead people don't have civil yes. rights. Well, because at first she's, like, she's saying that he's um, feeding the dead people to the pigs Mm -hmm. and he says hold on well i can't do nothing she's like why he tells her no law against turning dead people i mean feeding dead people into pigs just there's so much wrong with that now there is a law against that it's called murder because uh, (laughs) he has to get the humans from somewhere and then he uh, he follows that up with what I said before. Yeah. Dead people have no civil rights. Yes. He. This is literally the dialogue that happens in this scene. And that's when we knew that this is the the greatest sheriff <laughs> in any movie I've ever seen. I just dead people have no civil rights. None. All right. So then we get this weird ass. Like, I don't even know. I can't even explain this. The clown? Yeah, I can't. I don't know what the fuck happened. So. Like, was he scaring them? Yeah, that's what it was was like. Like, I don't fucking know. But it looked like a flashback. So, the old women are. Oh, sorry, the sheriff leaves and now the women are talking. So, then we see Zambrini walking through a room dressed as a fucking clown. But, like, a witch clown. And he starts like it's like a top hat and a cape. Yeah, and he starts like threatening these old women. Uh, at this point, I just lost all logic, and I was so confused. I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> I was like, "Why is he dressed up like a clown?" Like, I have no clue. What the hell is going on? No clue. But he's scaring them, and it's like his fucking voice is all warped. I still don't know. I still don't know. But then we get the... We actually get the part that actually kind of unnerved me. Of, of this, so like, then, genuinely yeah, unnerved me. Um, so we get Zambrini walking into uh, the girl's room. Yeah, slowly walks in. Like, stares at her as she's asleep. Takes out a the straight razor. Yeah, and yeah. then, like, starts, like, cutting her. And it's, like... Like, violently cutting her. It's and... filmed very weird... It looked almost stupid, and then and then it got me. Like it was yeah. weird because it was like a stupid murder scene. Yeah, and then she starts screaming, and the scream slowly and like gets really loud. Yes, and turns into that pig pigzilla it's, squeal. It again. turns, but it does that weird shot where like it's like bright red, 
But yeah. then it zooms out and, and it's her mouth. And it's from her mouth as she's screaming. Like that was actually <laughs> I have to give yeah. this movie credit. That was the only part that I was like, wow, that's actually pretty good. And then she's like in bed screaming, covered in blood, right? Uh yes. And it keeps showing the pigs and you hear more screaming and then she wakes up. Yep. It's a nightmare. And then he's like there to no, he's not there to comfort her, so she no. It just skips to the she next scene. She just wakes scene. up. So yeah. she, she starts working for Zambrini. There's this weird guy that keeps coming in and like oh, this guy talking to her. Mm. This big pimpin, this dillweed. Big pimpin. He is not big pimpin. Oh, he is. He is anything but big pimpin. Well, he is so smooth. <laughs> so he asks. Uh, he asks. He keeps her, flirting with her. Like, why are you? Why are you running away? Aren't you too pretty to be working here? Things yeah. like that. So he leaves, and then Zambrini asks why she's running away. She says she no, doesn't Because then he tells her, you should get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, everyone who's, like, worked for him has disappeared or something like that. Right. He thinks she should run away. Yes. Then, uh... So this is where the old lady, like, is, like, looking out the door again. And doesn't she say, remind me to lock the door or whatever? Oh, yeah, they're talking, and she's like... I forgot to lock the door. Like, oh, she's like talking about the Zambrini, like, yeah. still on about the pigs and how he's she, like, yeah, she's like getting crazier the pigs and crazier. Are gonna get loose. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, she's like, you forgot to lock the door. Never forget to lock the door again. And she's Never like all forget. terrified. And I'm thinking, you can't just lock the door now. You have yeah, that one. Not... You have that one window of opportunity to lock the door, and you ruined it. So then Zambrini gets a visit from the sheriff. And yes. Zambrini, before before the sheriff comes in, he tells the girl that she doesn't have to come out because... Like, she has asthma. She has asthma. And he's going to make up an excuse for mm-hmm. her that she's sick. So she's listening to this, and then he tells the sheriff this, and the sheriff's like, well, can I still see her? And he's like, yeah, that's fine. And then he goes and tells her, like, okay, you get, like, what's happening. Right. She goes and talks to him and uh the fuck does he ask her he asks her like i think it wasn't really anything it wasn't really anything important Mm -hmm. uh he just asked her where she's from and stuff and he like she kind of evades the question Mm -hmm. um they talk they just make small chit chat i think at this because he wasn't interrogating her or anything no no he was just talking to zambrini because yeah the, the crazy old ladies were Talking about his pigs. Yeah. Um, then it's the next day and... Uh, the guy, the fucking douchebag is uh, No, no, wait. The, she goes and calls her dad. Oh, that's right, yeah. And she's talking on the phone. And um, she calls and she's like, can I speak to Mr. Webster? And she talks to him. She's like, I miss you and all this other stuff. No, I don't want to come home. I can't come home. You don't understand. I can't come back. I need to grow up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're a grown-ass woman. I need what do you to... mean you need to grow up? I need to grow up. I was like, I was okay. Like, you are a grown-ass woman. No. She but, is not. I mean, this scene makes more sense once you get to the end of the yes, movie. Yes, it does. But, um, so this uh, at this point you know something weird is going on. Um, excuse me. Everything weird is going on. This is just a weird movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Nothing is normal. So there's fucking... Uh, piece of dog shit is back oh he's the asshole okay. that keeps hitting on her he is running through a field with his dog yeah and then like crazy yeah just running through the field with his dog i guess it's supposed to show his connection to his dog again it makes sense when you see the move the end Does of it? the movie but you have to get through this far because the dog is has like a connection to the guy yeah but i don't i don't know it i think i was I trying to set like, up something but it's the one thing in the world he treats with respect yeah, well, that's, his dog. that's the only thing, yeah. Sort of. So... <laughs> so he finds the dis- the the, uni- the nurse's uniform yeah. that she threw away. And then it literally cuts to him at the restaurant. Talking to her about it. Talking to her about it, and he's like, I found something. Something that might interest you. Yeah, and he's like immediately accusing her of throwing it away and all this stuff. Right, because she's the only one that... And she keeps denying it, but then he's just like, hey, we should go on a date. Yeah. And she's like, no. And then he's like, tomorrow what? at 8. He's like, why don't I pick you up at 8? And she's like, no. And he's like, 
Tomorrow at 8. I'll pick you up at 8. Yeah. yeah. So what did she, you do, Will? She fucking goes. Yep. Even though she didn't want to. Well, they have a very, no, quote unquote, is... hot date. That's not a <laughs> hot date. <laughs> Where they um... sit in a car and he is like dry humping her. Yeah, he's like, trying to like get in her pants and stuff. She, he's like, "Come on, babe, and she's come like, on." She doesn't want to do it, but come he is, on, babe. He is rubbing up against her, just. <laughs> so we like he's about to like get aggressive, and yeah. you see a light fly, flash on his eyes, yeah. and it's the <laughs> it's the sheriff. Oh, uh, this dip, this dip the stick. one useful thing he did. Well, yeah, he stopped a rape. That's good. The one useful That's thing he did. That's the only thing he does right in that movie. But he did it on accident. Yes. Because he, he stops and he's like, you need to have a permit to park here. He's like, if you want to keep parked, you need to turn like your your fucking lights on or some shit. Yeah, and then, he, and then, she's, and then like, she's just like, hey, can, are you going to the, like, the cafe? Are you going past Zambrini's? And she gets out yeah. and the guy's like, where are you going? Where are you he's going? Pissed off. You're as filthy as his pigs. <laughs> oh, I forgot. During this scene, when he's like trying to get it on with her, he's he accuses her of sleeping with Zambrini, Zambrini, and being filthy as his pigs. And she's like, "You know, he's filthy. He's filthy as his pigs. You're filthy." Yeah. If if he can get it, why can't I get it? <laughs> so she drives with the sheriff back to Zambrini's, and he asks if she, he's if she's related to Zambrini the Great because he used to be a circus performer. Yeah. This is where it's revealed that he used to be like a cir- a big circus act. Well. But he fell off like the trapeze or something. I don't know. He fell off of something. Yeah. And apparently he died for like a split second. Remember? Mm-hmm. They mentioned this. And after he came back, he was never normal again. <laughs> this will come up later. And a really, this will come a up really later. great, uh, a really great, great quote by one of the characters. Yeah. It's, uh. <laughs> It's, it's very a, it's something special. Highly logical. So the sheriff like leans over and he's like, Listen, I gotta tell you something. I think you're attractive. That's just the God's honest truth. There aren't many attractive people around there aren't, here. There aren't many attractive people around here and you're you're attractive. I mean, yeah, it's all like there's like what, ten dudes? Yeah. And, and then and, one and one woman. Two oh, there, two well, grandmas. Well there's two grandmas and then one younger yeah. woman. Yeah. Shocking. So she gets back to Zambrini's place and starts looking around the back of like his place, oh. and he stops her and is like, "What are you doing here?" Yeah. Like she's like, "Oh, I'm just looking around," and he's like, "No, you can't be back here. I don't want you back here. Yeah. Like, go, go away. I don't want you back here. I don't go away." Yeah. And then, uh, like, she leaves. Um, we get a scene of. Uh... It shows his bloody hand. Yeah. We get a scene because the the dipstick who wanted to sleep with her oh, he this works one. he works at an oil field now you just you gotta premise this with an oil in rig a quote-unquote oil rig which is literally just an abandoned silo somewhere out in the middle of a field well but it's an oil rig movie magic they didn't even try to doctor this up how would they doctor it up i don't know like try and like how I, I have no how idea. well it's a silo they're completely different things yes that's all they had but they're working in oil rig that's they all could they have had. at least said no that they're working on a silo i don't know they're probably like uh, i don't know but yeah it's an oil rig oh uh, so and he's telling his friends and he's making it up he's telling them like yeah oh I, this this girl was so hot oh man you, you should have seen this this girl i'm she sorry was well, so hot did you say this girl was so hot? Because he says it a million oh, times. He says oh, it. This girl is so hot. This girl. This girl. You know. This girl. So hot. That girl was so hot. You, this girl. <laughs> this girl right here. This girl. This girl in the movie. So, so hot. hot. He says it every like, other. Sentence. I wonder if Mark Lawrence just did it to like boost the confidence of his daughter. This whole movie was a, a project to. It was a passion project Boost between his daughter's a, confidence. A, a father and a daughter. It's a father's love. Yep. Well, yeah, he, he keeps saying it, and then he's like, he doesn't tell them that, you know, she fucking, like, said no to him. So, she, she, he, he said, tells them that he, she they had sex, but then he says a line that I am still 
I don't know what the she fuck this means. She was more of a man than I was. What the fuck does that mean? I think he was literally, instead of saying that he tried to, like, you know, take advantage of her, instead that of she that... she took to, advantage of him. To save face, he says either he, she took advantage of him or that she was a man. No. I think it's the first one. Yeah? Because the second one makes literally no goddamn sense. Well, that is true. Like, it, No. I'm guessing what well, yeah is he I'm guessing what he meant is she was like you know ridiculously forward with him you know to make him make himself feel better well, with his friends. Then it just it literally just like goes full tilt cuts yes. right to him like the same guy that was talking mm-hmm. about how hot she was like like n- leaning on her bed. No, don't forget he's getting he gets in his car and his dog jumps in. He's like, nope, you have to run on. I home. have a, I have a date tonight. But you know you have I have run? a date tonight. And the dog runs away, and then, and then it shows him leaning on her bed. He is in her her swag room, the the soot covered room. Yes. Yeah, she's wearing like a nightgown, and you know they're flirting with each other, and he's just like, "I'm gonna surprise you," and she's like, uh, "I like surprises." And she's, I have a surprise for you too. She has like lingerie on. Yeah, she's, she's like, like, "I have a surprise her, for you too." Starts taking off her stockings yeah. and everything. My favorite, the funniest part is. She's like she goes to the bathroom really quick to uh you know grab a certain instrument. Yes. And he gets in bed and I swear to god it looks like he's like masturbating. He gets in bed like he, like so starts like rolling around and you like You know what it looks like? You ever see like those infomercials? Yeah. About like um mattresses and stuff? Yeah. And when the people get in bed, oh, and they're, so, they're just like, like so comfortable. Oh my god. They're, like rolling around it's like so comfy. Oh yeah. That's what he looked like. Yeah, it's true. And it's like the dingiest bed on the planet. And then without her getting in the bed, we just see her feet. Oh, that's my favorite shot. We just well, see her feet. It's so like artful. Yeah. Because then... you just see his feet like wiggling around, and I'm just like, why the fuck are they showing us and his feet? And then, and then suddenly her feet a just... second pair of feet. <laughs> yeah, enter <laughs> enter the frame. You know what that is? That's art. They just play footsie. And then she's like laying awkwardly on the side of the bed. And, and there, he, like, he like rolls over to like kiss her. Kiss her. And then. They, they don't kiss. He just like pecks her. Like. Mm. Yeah. Just quick. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking quick. It's, it's like they're Cat, in the throes yeah. of passion. And he's like. Oh, he's so her. passionate. Pecking. They're not even like closing their eyes. Passionate pecking. <laughs> they don't even close their eyes. They just like. Hashtag passionate pecking stare into each other's souls as they peck each and other. And then she rolls him over and like takes up, stabbing him. takes up the blade and just starts like wailing on him with this like straight razor. Yeah, you see like he has like cuts on his face. Gashes all over the place. Which didn't look bad actually. Didn't I'll look bad. Is more than I was expecting. So she like freaks out and starts like crying and Zambrini gets home and like finds her like mm-hmm. like kneeling towards like on a rocking chair and she's like I'm s- don't hurt don't she's punish like, don't, me don't punish me don't punish me I didn't do anything wrong I, I didn't, didn't do, do anything, anything wrong, wrong mommy and I'm like oh and then this is another one of those uh parent issues movie oh Na- I just have one uh one phrase for you nail on the fucking head um so <laughs> So Zambrini cleans her up and then like, takes the the body, chops it up, and into uh, the pig pen and starts chopping it up. The piggies eat it. Yep. Well, most of it. Mm, we'll yeah. See later. Um, how how that happened is beyond me, but hey. So she the next day she goes to a phone outside and calls Daddy again, but he's not there. So she she calls this well, place. Well, um. First of all, before she gets there, the phone is in, like, the middle of nowhere on, like, a telephone pole. Yeah. And as she's running there, out of fucking nowhere, you hear this loud pig squeal. Yeah. And they keep doing that, and then she talks on the phone. And, and then, then it goes just, again, oh. this movie loves to go full tilt with things. She starts running 
like crazy, screaming, no, no. And it like gets louder and louder and, and louder. louder. And then like it, it interjects like pig squeals. There's like the guy yelling. Yeah. There's her yelling it's no. It's like, the... like it's just like insane. It's tonal insanity. It's disorienting. And she's just running. Yeah. And like while all this like the sound is just hitting your ears. It's batshit crazy. It's insane. Then the deputy and the sheriff come, right? Yes. To talk to him about uh that this guy's missing and no this is where they remember they go they go back to the old ladies oh yeah because the pigs were going crazy that's when she mentions... and that's when she says that he's turning people the people into pigs and i'm like I, um i was like what i'm like okay that's not the same like feeding them is not turning them into pigs but then he talks to the doctor who was helping her that's later that's the scene no, because Isn't it? Remember, memory, they go and he... Because he tells them. He, no, he steps on the hand and then the doctor's after this, after the hand scene. Because remember, they find the dog. They mm. find the dog at the mm. farm. That's how, well, that's how my notes are. But Because I remember he talks to them while the doctor's there. Because when that's... she mentions... But that's later. Then what the fuck was this one? This one was just the, they're saying about the pigs going crazy because like, the pigs were all like... Oh. insane because they were eating mm. the the guy and this is where she mentions the uh the pi the pigs are becoming the humans are becoming pigs i guess she mentions it again i mean it doesn't really matter where it yeah. is because it's so ridiculous but, <laughs> i mean i guess we'll just like, what happens is a doctor visits macy because she's getting more and more like mental she needs to take her medicine and uh so the doctor leaves and, like, tells her to, like... He overhears her saying that he's turning people into pigs. He, like, he gives her some medicine, they leave, and the do doctor mentions to the sheriff that Egyptians... I, I don't know if this is true. I didn't study a lot I'm of Egyptians. I'm gonna Egyptian. tell you no. I don't think it's true at all, because they worshipped cats and Well, I, I, I have jackals. legitimately never in my fucking life heard of anything involving pigs in with Egyptian, ancient Egypt. Egypt... It, so he's he mentions Ever. the fact that, and if we're wrong, please c correct us. But I, however, never, I've never heard it either. Yeah, but, but here's he, the problem, Will. He, we're not wrong. He because we are never wrong. No, never. Why would we be? No, there ain't no, ain't no fucking pigs in Egyptian mythology. Which is like, did they need some bullshit explanation? Because he's like in Egyptian mythology, well, they believe she's that she's wearing an ankh. Yeah. They believe that you can turn into a pig. And I'm just thinking like... Yeah, well, no, they worship pigs, and then you turn into a pig, and then you turn into a god? Yeah. Like, what kind of jack bullshit is that? Well, it's it's math. Human goes to pig, pig goes, to, goes god. to god. God. That's not a es escalation. You know, forget, like, Horus and, like... God. <laughs> uh. Just God. I mean that's not that's not a, that's not like a zero to one hundred scale, right? It makes no sense. They didn't worship pigs. They worshipped like they. It's like they needed like they worshipped cats, jackals, stuff like that. Like not pigs. <laughs> Look, Will, I'm gonna give you the hottest take of all time. You don't need this entire subplot if you want to call it that, because we'll get to it at the ending. But it's pointless. Yep. People turning into pigs. No, you don't need this nonsense. But he he tries to explain it off, and you know. So the sheriff goes back to Zambini's house, Zambrini, sorry. Yeah. Um, and they're kind of investigating more because they want to look into why this woman keeps saying mentioning the pigs and where this I guess where happened to this guy. So they go to the pig pen. They they are talking to Zambrini, and then they hear a dog. Yeah. And so they go to the pig pen. And Sam the Brini, dog is like laying there, and then, <laughs> and they, and then there's another, there's a deputy, uh -huh. and he's like standing there, and I don't know how this deputy, the deputy is just as oblivious as the sheriff because oh, he didn't is. see the hand. No one saw. There's it. a hand on the ground where and the Sam dog Brini is. Quickly steps on it to cover it up. Yep. So they don't see it. But that hand was already there, and the deputy was already there when they got there. Oh, who gives a shit? Will like he didn't look down at the dog and see the hand. Nope. How? Because he's uh, dumb. I mean, I I don't. I'm will. I'm done trying to explain logic in these movies. Will, because he dumb. 
Yeah, well, I mean, that is true. So I can explain all that. They dumb. (laughs) They fucking dumb. (laughs) So they talk, uh, and like he denies it. He wants him to leave, and and they're they're suspicious because like, why is the dog just sitting by the pig pen? And the women told them that he's feeding people to pigs. When why did why did Zambrini not mention that there was a dog there? Yeah, and all this other stuff. stuff. So he Zambrini just says he left in his pick the for any normal pickup trip real cop with a brain in his head all of this would be like a fucking red flag yep but no so zambrini like after the sheriffs leave they so the sheriffs don't leave they go back into the the cafe yeah and zambrini quickly picks up the hand and throws it back in yeah and uh so the sheriff is sitting down and talking to the girl and she's being weird and she's being weird (laughs) To put and it mildly she's like just like raising her hair up and like showing her neck i, I thought she was trying to seduce him that was my point. assumption too but no but no she's just being weird because he's like asking her all this stuff she's being like <laughs> oh i don't know i don't know <laughs> i was i don't uh, know i was tired and then he asks your favorite question that is not even to do with the investigation at all so he grills her for a minute and then literally is like hey we're going on a like a a weekend thing what was what he say he said we're going on a great weekend yeah who who has events like a great weekend we're going you don't he didn't mention where he was going well you don't you don't tell that to people he just said like if i came up to you and said hey alex let's go have a (laughs) listen we're going on a great weekend you gotta come. come along slap me in the face you know what we're having now will we're having a great weekday this is a great weekday. You want to have a great weekday? I mean, it, uh, that makes sense. He tells her nothing. But a great weekend? Nothing. How do you know it's great if you haven't been yet? He tells her nothing. Just a great weekend. It's like they couldn't think of no details whatsoever. Like when they like it just it struck me as weird. Like when they wrote that, they couldn't think of him to say like, "Hey, we're going, I don't know, camping this weekend or some shit." They couldn't tell that. But so. Yeah. They leave, and then it's nighttime all of a sudden. The dog keeps barking. And then the, the three dudes that were yeah. his friends like Show are investigating the, the pig pen. Oh, they, they do the best investigation, which consists of uh, punching Zambrini in the face. And saying, oh, Zambrini like tries to like push them along, and he's like, I don't like being touched by pigs. Yeah. I don't like pigs touching me. <laughs> he punches him, and Zambrini has like a bloody nose. And then they kick him a little bit, and one guy spits on him, and they leave. That's it. Yep. And then uh, he cleans up, and here's the dog again. And the next scene, you see that he's driving his pickup truck. And he drags reaches the, in and drags the dog, the dead dog, the dead dog, and just so he kills the dog, throws it in a bush. But it doesn't matter because the next day someone finds it because he's very inconspicuous. Yep. So the sheriff goes to talk to the people, the three friends. And then you're like, oh, we're going to go burn that place down. Yeah. Like, you He's know. He's telling them, no, you can't do that. And then they're like, we're going to do it anyway. And then we get another scene of a new guy coming into town. Oh, yeah. In a, must- in a yellow Mustang. And he pulls up to, like, this old school gas station. And he's like, he, like, gets out. He's like, hey, any gas here? He's, he's like, like, used to be. Used to be. Where's the next gas station? Up uh, the road. <laughs> he, and Have he you wa- seen this girl? No. Ask uh, ask Mark. He's across the, the way. Walks ask across Mark the across, street. Well, the way he says it. He says everything like, ask Mark across the way. Used to be. That's a, a little too... Uh, <laughs> a little too clear? A little too clear. Cause like, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, Mark across the street. Across the street. And then he goes, talks to Mark across the street, and I guess Mark across the street and then tells him. There's no dialogue, so no. Mark just tells him where to go. Thank fucking God. And then we get a scene of her turning, like the girl turning on the jukebox and oh. doing one of the most awkward dances I've ever seen on screen. Because it's like this weird close up while she's like weirdly gyrating and like throwing her arms up and like, like, just like. Like, she looks like she's not having any fun at all, either. You want to know why? Because she Cause wasn't. Because she's not. Because <laughs> she wasn't, exactly. Because the camera is, I am not joking, right in, in her, her face. face. It's so weird. It's so awkward. And yep. she's, like, just, like, you know, moving around all awkwardly. I just want to mention that 
there's a lot of scenes in this movie where like they're in the cafe and they're having a serious conversation and it's playing like this fucking like funk music in the back yeah and it's so out of place every time but in this scene like she's doing this dance and like he's like watching her and then the he, guy shows up the guy shows up and is like hey like i like i know you we're mutual friends yeah you can call us mutual friends yeah and he tells her like i'm from the hospital she he orders a yellow pie a coffee and a water makes sense but um he tells her he's, yeah he's like i want that yellow pie there and uh to be fair he does get a very yellow, yellow pie. pie that's true um so she's like asking where he's from and he says the hospital and she like knows instantly and... that's when uh we started like you know piecing it right that uh yeah that she's a, a mental patient she's a mental patient she escaped from an asylum and yeah. then he tells her like you know it's safe to come back it's safe to come back she's like oh, okay i want to come back i want to come back and like, so she goes and gets packed and yeah. then breeding comes out and is like no like and oh he's is like, she leaving is she leaving yeah. now and he goes and talks to her and uh tells her kind of convinces her not to leave yet. i guess but she's like i'll talk to him yeah and oh boy she um she's walking with him on like this dirt road like r constant constantly rubbing his like tie like yeah. she's trying to seduce him or something and i guess then she's like well i don't want to go like can i stay and he's like no you can't stay yeah and then she's i guess talking on the phone and then we get a quick scene of like the sheriff oh um, no no so before they talk before we talk on the phone we see her in her room and it's playing the papa bear song and she's like putting, putting on grease on a knife well, first she puts lipstick on and then puts x's on and her it seems cheeks. normal but then she starts like putting like x's and shapes on her cheeks yep and she what the fuck does she put on the knife I don't know. Like it looks like a cream. Yeah, like, looks... I have no idea. Was it lubricant? I have <laughs> no fucking, fucking no. idea. I don't know. I still don't know. <laughs> we it, never see it, it again. Looks like old glue. Yeah, I was thinking like she, it was just like some white like gel. I don't know why she does it, but <sighs> who the fuck knows? Anyway, we get a quick scene of the sheriff going back to the friends because he he knows they're gonna go burn the house yeah, down. Yeah, he tells them don't do it. And the and the guy's like, well, we've been talking law and order all night, and this yeah, the best this line. one of the best lines in the entire movie. He literally he walks up to the sheriff and literally says, if he's been dead once, then we can like murder him or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like if he's already been dead, then there ain't no harm in killing him. Like. Then, like, the law doesn't apply to him. Yeah, they were Which, talking like, law and order, and that's the conclusion they came to. Because he's been pronounced dead, well, that they can kill him again without any qualms. Well, I get it. You know why I get it? Because in this universe, once you die, it's fucking game on, boy. Yeah. Because it's fine to feed people to pigs... You can do Dude, whatever you want. If someone's pronounced dead and you murder them, it's not it's it's not it's not illegal. All those laws that apply to dead people in the real world, in this movie, they don't fucking exist. Because dead people have no civil rights. They dead people ain't got no civil rights. Exactly. God damn it. Yeah, dead people got no civil rights. So if he died once we could kill him again. <laughs> no. Ugh. That makes no fucking sense. And that goes nowhere, but the fact that they even bothered putting that line in there. And then this li Beyond this me. scene literally goes nowhere because it just ends. Yeah. And then she's talking on the phone. And then she tells uh, she tells the doctor. She's like, that it's for you. It's for you. He gets on the phone and is immediately like, hello? And it's like, there's hello? no one there. It's just a dial tone. There? And then I knew. I knew. Shit was the. Uh... Shit was up? Yep. She stabs him in the back a bunch of times. Yep. And it's fucking weird. Again. It's like this awkward close-up of her just aggressively stabbing him. Yeah. He dies and... And then the... Same thing. He... Zambrini shows up and takes the body to the pigs. And the sheriff shows up and, like, she's, like, outside because the dead body is still yeah. there. Because Zambrini hasn't... Hasn't oh, yeah. cleaned up the body yeah. yet. And she, like... He's like, let's go inside. And she, like, 
sees the knife on the counter. Yeah. And she walks in, immediately grabs it, and is like, why all these questions? Like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, why why are we doing, like... And, uh... He leaves, right? He leaves. Because yeah, he gets a fucking call on his uh, CB to go, uh... I guess his deputy tells him, hey, those three guys, yeah, they're on the way there. They're gonna, like, murder Zambrini. Yeah. So he goes and fucking they do the, shines a flashlight. They do the flashlight on the eyes. <laughs> It shows them driving, and they have like these pissed off looks on their faces, and then you just see a flashlight like shining in their heads. Yep, and then they're just like, they're like okay, and then they just leave, they and just then leave. they go nowhere. You don't see those three again the entire Never. rest of the movie. You see one of them again. I mean, the yeah. movie's already almost over, but but then so then he feeds the body to the the yeah. pigs, and and. It's so weird. Every single time he feeds him to the pigs, he does it in a different way. Yeah. The first time he took off his shoes and talked to him, and then, like, and then the second time he cut him up, and then this time he just drags him into the pen and leaves him. Yeah. Like, body, hole, shirt on, everything. And they eat him. And we get a scene where the sheriff's in his fucking office. Yep, and he gets a call from... The hospital. The hospital, and they're looking for the doctor, because they, he told him he was going to this place. Oh, we also forgot to mention that um, the doctor said earlier that her father is dead. Yes. Her father, she doesn't oh, no. have a father. Yeah, he said she doesn't have a father. Which is a weird way to say that her father is dead. But anyway. Well, we found out later that he is indeed dead. Yes. But, um, yes. So the sheriff gets a call and they tell him, like... That she's insane and dangerous. Yes, because they tell him, like, the, the doctor, we sent a doctor there to look for this woman and it's her. And so he goes, calls Zambrini, and he's like, hey, don't tell her any of this, but she's very dangerous. I'm going on my way there to grab her. And I'm just thinking, like, okay. f- yeah, he's definitely not going to tell her. Well, he does. And he's like, you got to get out of here. And then, so he's like, yeah, we got to go. Pack up your things. We she's gotta not go. going. And then she stabs just him. stabs Zambrini and kills him. Instantly. Yep. She stabs him once, and he's dead. And it's then... so quick. I didn't have time to react. And he falls over, and then the pigs, like, start freaking out, mm-hmm. and they apparently bust the pin. Well, so they bust the pin, then she is on the phone. And, say, and saying, and, like, Daddy, I love you. Like I she, love you, Daddy. Like, the conversation she has with her, uh, quote-unquote, Daddy. But now you hear, which, it's a decent touch, she's on the phone, and she's saying, I love you, Daddy, I love you, Daddy, but you hear, um... The operator. This is a recording. Like, like you have reached a number that has been disconnected. Yeah, please hang up and try again. This you is have, a recording. Yeah, you have reached a number that has been disconnected. Like, as she's just daddy. like, thank you, daddy. Oh, I love you, daddy. Yes, daddy. All this stuff. And so then that's the, when you get like... The pigs yeah. bust into Zambrini's place. And she just kind of like looks and that's it. And then the sheriff and the, the deputy like come right after that. Yeah. They go into the door and then it literally cuts to the next scene. It's like the next day now. Yeah, and like the sheriff and the one friend of the guy that yeah. they, that she murdered, so they're are talking. Out and... and the sheriff mentions that um, she murdered her dad <laughs> because her dad was raping her. Yep, and so she killed him and like went insane. Yes. Yep. Uh, Daddy issues. Oh, big daddy issues. We got uh, parent issues again, big ones. I mean, this one makes more sense than the other ones. Well, yes, it does because that'll uh, that'll do it. Yep. Um, I think that would drive anyone in fucking insane. Yeah. So, um, so this one actually makes sense. Yes. Um. So then they're talking, and then like the sheriff goes over to a guy wrangling up all the pigs, and like this yeah. is the most. I really. I wish they would have just ended it with no. like she killed. She killed all those people because she killed her dad. Like they should have ended it nope. there. They should have. Will important because the copy we watched was called the Thirteenth Pig. Yep. And the whole time I'm thinking, what the flying fuck kind of title is that? Well, here you go. So the sheriff walks like, over and is like, I got all of the pigs. like, all got, 12 of them? I got 12 of them. He's like, okay, count them just to make sure. And he's like counting and he's like, mm, that's weird. I got an extra pig. Yeah, I got 13 pigs. And then he's like, oh, by the way, I found this in the pen. And it's, uh, he hands him her, uh. Honk. 
and the little like that she was wearing around her medallion. That she was wearing around her neck. Yep. And there's a thirteenth thing. Uh, she it literally mentioned nothing about her worshiping Egyptian well, mythology or any of this shit. And we're supposed to believe she just turned into a pig. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't. I in, just in the in the logic of this, are we supposed to believe that every single person who becomes eaten by a pig turns into a pig? Are all of those pigs former people? I think that's what they were going for. I think, but that is ridiculous. Can I please just say that? That that is the most useless thing ever. It's totally insane. What's the point? There's no point. Like, I don't get it. Would this movie suffer if you took all that out? No. Exactly. I don't know why they added it. Like, was Mar- it not Mark enough? Mark Lawrence is a fucking madman. I don't know why he <laughs> added a like a supernatural. Plot. It doesn't even make I, sense. And again, this is at the end of the movie. This yeah. isn't like an overarching story. This is lit. They mentioned a little bit about how Egyptians worship pigs, which is bullshit. See, and then I should have known. And then they do the end scene where she turns into a fucking pig. I should have known because when the doctor explained that that nonsense about Egyptian mythology, I was thinking that's just a dumb throwaway line. No, that's just bullshit. I don't know why. Little it wasn't did I know bullshit. That was not bullshit. They were gonna go there. I wish it was bullshit. I wish it was. <laughs> I wish it was bullshit because that is that ending is bullshit. Turn into a pig. Uh. So. Well. You know what? Will. What? It's uh. Th- there's more pigs here because uh. Whittle did. I know. The the magic goes beyond the film. See. Yeah. Because I am also a pig now. I have turned into a pig. We are all pigs. I have transcended human anatomy because and become. We a all pig. know what comes after pig. Godliness. God. We Just be- not- we become gods. <laughs> yes. So you know what? After watching this, I'm a pig. Either for that, I am, or because watching this movie feels like an hour and twenty minutes of wallowing in someone's shit. Yeah, like a pig. Mm. Um, poetic. My third eye is open, though. You know, <laughs> pigs transcend space and time. And yes. If you become a, if you become lucky, lucky enough, not just the animal if pigs. You, if you become lucky enough to f- become one of these pigs, you can transcend into godliness. Mm-hmm. So what you gotta according do, according to this logic, what you gotta do, this is simple: find a pig farm, and just feed yourself to it. Just kill yourself and throw yourself into the pig pen. Yes. Then and you then... can become. Then you can become transcendent. Because as soon as they eat you, suddenly you be- it'll just bloop and a pig will spawn. You become a pig. And that's you. That's you, the logic of this. You become a pig. And then eventually, through some weird shit, you become a god. What? How? What the fuck? Like, it's it's so ridiculous it was hard to even, like, stay like straight through that. You can't. That is fucking ridiculous. Well, and the reason we stayed straight is because... Again, we thought it was a bamboozled bullshit line. But I was, no, I was very bamboozled by this movie. Yeah, and then at the end, when just threw... as soon as he says twelve pigs, and I'm like, oh, oh no, you know what? We oh call no, that? you know what they call that? They sweep the fucking legs. <laughs> they sweep the fucking legs right out from under you. They just fucking pulled up that carpet, and you just fall straight on your ass. <laughs> Cause it it could have been an oh I mean it wasn't like a good movie but it was it was I didn't hate it. Here's the important thing: um, all, all of these movies that we watch are graded on a very serious curve. Our curve? Yes. It's a very. If you ask me to compare this to literally any other movie I've seen, normal movie from 1973, this pile of shit doesn't even get a one out of ten. No. However. Having said that, compared to all the movies we compared watched, to everything we watched on the podcast, I would say this sort of lands fairly in the middle. I would agree because, like most of these movies, like literally, if we weren't doing this, I would literally turn them off in the first like ten minutes. Yeah. I'd be like, "This is horseshit. I'm turning this off." 
Yeah. And like this one, even this one, I would probably turn off at the pigzilla part. I'd be like, okay, I'm done. Like, nah, you can't, Will. I would have. Then you get curious. But I, be like, what if you know there what? was a giant pig in this? There wasn't. There wasn't. That would have been even better. Like, would a, it? a pig deity. Oh, God. Yes. Pigs yes. too. Pigs too. Give me that pig god. Pigs too. Pig harder. <laughs> pig with a vengeance. Pig out. Um, a good day to pig out. <laughs> good. Pig hard with a vengeance. Um, yeah, you gotta have a sequel where, where they do transcend into gods. Yeah. They become. And then you have pig gods. The first ever pig gods, because obviously before this nonsense, no one ever thought about doing this. No, never. Well, because it didn't fucking exist. Yeah, because <laughs> like, ancient, ancient Egypt didn't have fucking pigs. Like, how do you even come to that fucking conclusion? Mark well, like, Lawrence is a fucking madman. I. Right? How do you come to that conclusion that pigs are worshipped by Egyptians and become gods? Like, really? I don't get okay, it. Mar- Mar- I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going off. I know. But, like, I don't get it. Look, Mark Lawrence, um, advice. I know this dude's probably dead by now. I don't care. His ghost can listen to us. <laughs> You're making a schlock movie. You know, you could you could do the do the explanation that every other horror director does. Say it's Native Americans. Yeah. Say, oh, there's an ancient Native American myth about pigs. But Egyptians? Who the fuck goes to Egyptians? What's next? Are we going to get one that's like, oh, in Buddhism, On a turn... <laughs> Well, not only Egyptians, but on a rural pig farm. Yeah, I know. How do you jump to that? <laughs> How do you jump to that conclusion? Egypt is very close to uh, fucking... California. Well, <laughs> like if Jesus Christ. Look, Egypt is very close to California. I don't okay? fucking. I don't understand it. But anyway, okay. So I'm sorry. I think we've said our final thoughts. I don't know if we need to. Unless there's something you forgot to get off your chest. Fucking get pig... off your belly, pig gods. You know, I picture like, you know, like the big Buddha. I picture, I picture the pig god as like a big pig Buddha, and he floats. I mean, I know he's Egyptian, but if we're going off of a rural yes. pig farm that worships Egyptian, no, like, go all the Egyptian way. Gods, go full tilt. Fuck it. Have him wear like Cleopatra <laughs> headgear. Yes. But who gives a shit, dude? Go full. This is our next artwork. I'm gonna Look, I'm, I'm gonna create a pig. Mark Lawrence that's wearing Egyptian. You already dedicated yourself to this. You can't just quit. No. You gotta go. You gotta go full full into it. Pyramids and shit. Pyramids and pigs. I'm you gonna... know what? That's the real You know who built the pyramids? The pigs. You know what? I've I've found a new religion. I'm going to start worshiping pigs. The prince of Egypt is and a then, pig. And then you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna do? Instead of a suicide cult. I'm just gonna. I'm going to become a pig. No, you have to make a cult and all feed yourself to pigs. Yes, I'm going to create a cult and be like, you know what? At the end of this, don't worry. We're all going to become gods. We just had to feed ourselves to pigs. Well, you don't have to tell them that first. How long do you have to be? How, how long do you have to be a pig before you know. become a god? But I guess you have to hope that it's long enough to where you don't get turned into bacon beforehand. Yeah, because he. They said he was eating the pigs. Yes, they specifically mentioned... So was he killing gods? <laughs> this is what happens when you don't think about the movie you make. <laughs> you don't you think know what? these things through. I want pig god bacon, because I, I bet you that is the most delicious bacon. It's probably the bacon they put on the avocado sandwich well, <laughs> in Beware the Blob, because that would be the best fucking bacon on the planet. Well, can you just imagine writing this script... <laughs> I just want you to think. Just the ending, like think. Just <laughs> how clever did he feel when he wrote that fucking ending? Just think, like I bet he thought. Fi- oh, this is the f- <laughs> like. Greatest. This shit is so clever. That's why it has like fifty titles. <laughs> None oh my of God. Like one of them was like the fucking the exorcism of so and so. Who the hell gets an exorcism? No, I know one. why they called it that. Because she becomes a pig. No. Because this came out in 1973. You know what came out in 1973? Fucking Exorcist. The fucking Exorcist. Yeah, my favorite horror movie. And they were like, oh shit. That Exorcist movie made a bunch of money. Gotta, gotta put Exorcist You know on. why Exorcist made it a lot of money? Because it was a fucking good movie. Whoa, dude. Because it was a fucking Whoa. good movie and it made sense. Oh my god. It didn't have pig gods. Yeah. Is is, is a little strange that a movie where a, a, a little girl gets possessed by a fucking demon makes more sense 
than a movie where a man feeds people to pigs. And a girl becomes a pig that is going to transcend into a god. Mm-hmm. I want god bacon. Oh I want pig god bacon. You're not going to get it. I'm I sorry. want it. Sorry. I want it. When I become a pig, if I'm made into the bacon, I better be the most delicious bacon on the planet. I bet you'll never listen to that scene in Snatch again where he talks about feeding people to pigs. You'll never see that scene with the same eyes again. Or Hannibal. Because now... <laughs> now I'll never see Hannibal again because I'm like, wow, that guy's a good dude. He's turning people into pigs to become gods. Yes. He's doing a service to these people in Mark Lawrence's eyes. Fuck this movie. Fuck this. It is bullshit. It's good, but like, fuck. It's good, but fuck this movie. Like it was good until that ending, because that ending is a piece of shit. It just slaps. And you keep right- in mind, when we say good, there's like a billion fucking asterisks after that. Yeah, it's not fucking good, but it compared to the movies we've watched. Yeah, it's you know good. how you read something sometimes and it says like it'll say something and then there's an asterisk and then it, you look down where the asterisk is and it says like <laughs> it says something there. Well, that's this. So when we say good. You have to read it means down. shit. And then you look down, and then it says, actually, shit. Like, we have to rate things on a scale on this show. So, like... Yes. Like... I can't rate like, these on a normal scale. Good just means shit. It doesn't mean it's good. Good means we didn't want to kill ourselves. <laughs> we didn't check the time. We didn't check the time. <laughs> we didn't want to kill ourselves, which, for a normal movie, you don't even... That doesn't happen. No, you just... You're you just entertained watch. by it. Yeah. You don't have to think to yourself, oh, man... Would I rather take a gun and shoot myself in the face instead of watching this? Yeah. Yeah, I would. You know what I thought about during this movie, though? And I'm sorry, this is the last joke I'm going to make. I thought about running into a pig pen and just letting them eat just me. Drop, just drop it. Just drop in there. Yeah. Eat me. Yeah. Eat me. Let me become one of you. <laughs> Let me join the ranks. And then you can do the same for someone else. Exactly. People who watch this movie... Oh, by the way, it's on Amazon Prime. It's on Amazon Prime. Um, so if you have Prime, you can watch it. I think there's a few versions on YouTube, but they're Maybe. really crappy. Because um, yeah, I think this I was, looked uh, it up. This was like... This was remastered, I'd say. Yeah. Um, but watch it on uh, Amazon, because that's where we watched it. Um, but yeah. Uh, you know, after you watch this movie, if you want to become a pig, I want to see, like... I want to see a mass uh, pig transformation. The more we think about this nonsense plot, I swear the the dumber it's gonna be. I just now I'm thinking about you're gonna pig. be sleeping tonight, and you're gonna wake up in the middle of the night just screaming, "Pig God!" Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna be like, I'm gonna start uh, worshiping the pig uh, God. <sighs> pig God! Pig just, God! <laughs> ah, oh, oh. I can't fucking escape this movie. I saw a pig God. <laughs> yeah, or you'll have a nightmare like a. <laughs> like oh God! The girl I did. hope I don't have a nightmare <laughs> like that. That is horrendous. <laughs> That was the one part that got me. Uh, yeah, so that was Pigs. That was Pigs. Directed by Mar- Mark Lawrence. Directed, starring, Mad and Man. produced by Mark Lawrence. And his daughter, Tony, Tony Lawrence. Lawrence. The great Tony Lawrence. A family affair. Um, 1973. We got a lot more in 1973, don't we? We might be like halfway. Okay. If Probably less. Well, don't worry. We got plenty more well, for we, you. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't believe this is our 31st episode, too. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Um, just thinking about it. Uh, thanks for all the people that listen. Thanks for downloading. Thanks for following us on Podbean or on our uh, Facebook page, uh, TMCOAN. Just uh, search. They mostly come out at night. We got a Twitter. We got all that stuff. Uh, our RSS feed is everywhere. So thank you guys so much for like the support. Thanks, you, thank you guys for listening. And uh, thank these movies for entertaining the hell out of us and giving us something to talk about thanks for making these movies yeah i mean they're shit but we eh, i don't know if appreciates the right word well all these people had a dream and the dream died you know what that dream was the dream of being a filmmaker they did it they did it i mean i can't say i have so exactly they got something on me for now um but anyway, maybe someday we'll get so pissed off we'll just have to. Maybe we'll make our own shitty movie eventually. Yeah, it'll um, be too competent though. I, I think it might be. Because <laughs> uh, now we know what not to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys so so much for listening. Uh, for they mostly come out at night. This has been Will, and this has been Alex, and we will talk to you all soon. Oink, oink, oink. <laughs> Squeal like a pig, boy. <laughs>